We have two different number systems, unsigned and signed. And we have unsigned and signed char, unsigned and signed short, typically. And for unsigned and signed char, these deal with 8-bit numbers. And unsigned means that all of our numbers from 00, 0 to FF are all positive. And there's times when we need this. For instance, if we are digitizing voltages, we want to have, say, 0 volts plus 10 volts, which are all positive voltages, and we're digitizing this, we want to use a number system where numbers are all positive, both from 00 to 7F and 80 to FF. But there's times when you need to have split supply voltages where you have minus 5 volts to plus 5 volts. In this case, half of our voltages have to be negative and half have to be positive. And so for unsigned char, what that means is that N, which is our most significant bit, which is 0 to 7 in this case from here to here, all these most significant bits are 0, and they're positive. In this case here from 8, 0 to FF, all the most significant bits are 1. So whether N equals 0 or N equals 1, all the numbers are positive, and that's perfect for digitizing positive voltages. For sine char, half the numbers for N equals 0, which are in this range here from 0, 0 to 7F, N equals 0, and our numbers are positive, and half the numbers are negative where N equals 1, and that's at this range here from 8, 0 to FF, these are going to be negative numbers because the most significant bit of 8 is 1 all the way up to FF, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. I'll start with a 1. Now if we pick any number in the range of here n equals 0 for numbers from 0, 0 to 7F, let's pick a number like 5A. 5A here will also have exactly the same 5A here in exactly the same place between 0, 0 and 7F. However, if we pick a number like A5 here, which is in the range of n equals 1 here, it's different than the a5 that we've got in this same range of 8, 0 through FF here. In fact, we're going to find that all the numbers from 8, 0 to FF here and 8, 0 to FF here are offset here by a factor of 2 to the 8, which is 256 places. That means it looks like 8, 0 through FF here has been shifted completely 256 positions to the left to give ourselves our negative numbers where n equals 1 here. So when n equals 1 here, it's not the same value that you're going to get here as you're going to get here. Now if we bring up our Mac calculator, we should be able to figure out what 5a is. If we go here to hex, punch in 5a, and hit decimal. So what we should have here is 90 for both 5a unsigned and 90 for 5a signed. Now that we've got this figured out, then we have to figure out, well, what is a5 here is an unsigned number, and then try and calculate what A5 is as a signed number. Now, the way we're going to do this is figure out what A5 is, which actually works out to be 165. But we know that there's an offset between these two of 2 to the 8 or 256. Now, if we try typing in 165 decimal and subtracting 256, it should work, and it will work on the PC calculator, but on the Mac calculator, it gives you a funny number up here. So what we can do is just do 256 minus 165, and remember to put a negative sign in front of it, and the number here should be minus 91. Now, if we're given a number like minus 91 to start, how do we go back the other way? Well, we basically add 256 and convert the other way. So if we add 256 to 91, it's really doing a subtraction. And what we're going to end up with here is 165. And when we convert it, we're going to get a 5 again. So it's very easy to go from negative numbers here to what their equivalent is here, or go from a hex number here and figure out what its equivalent is here. Let's look at doing some simple calculations with the unsigned line. Well, let's just add FF plus 1. When you do this, you're going to get 0, 0 plus a carry. On your calculator, you'll just see 1, 0, 0. What that means is we started with all the money in the universe in our unsigned line, we got another dollar, and we ended up with 0 dollars. And the reason for this, this is an 8-bit number or char, this is a char, and only the 0, 0 is a char, not the 1. So this means that we've added two 8-bit numbers, as it says here, and got a ninth bit, and when that happens, this is an invalid result. So when C equals 1, one for addition, then the result is not valid in our unsigned line. Now let's take a look at a very simple subtraction. Let's take a look at 0, 3, subtract 0, 5. What you're going to see is you're going to have a borrow because you're subtracting a larger number from a smaller number, and the result here is going to be FE. Visually, what that means is I've gone three units to the right, and I've turned around and I've gone five units this way and ended up with FE, and this is an invalid result. So in this case as well, we've got C equals 1, 
which means that if we get a carry and we subtract a larger number from a smaller number, the result is not valid. So anytime c equals 1 for an addition or a subtraction, it's an invalid result, means that we've overflowed our number system anytime c equals 1. Let's take a look at those calculations on the sign line. FF plus 1 means we start with FF here, we add 1, we get 0. Perfectly fine. If we take 3, so 3 units this way, we turn around and we go 5 units back this way, we end up with FE, and FE is negative 2, and that makes perfect sense. So calculations that don't work on the unsigned may work on the signed, and vice versa, and we'll see that some calculations will not work on either the unsigned or the signed. Let's look at 7f plus 1 gives us 8, 0 plus no carry, which means 7f plus 1 is 8, 0, which works perfectly fine on the unsigned line because carry is not 1. Carry is 0, which means it's a valid result. However, on the sign line, we started with 7f, we added a dollar, and now we're in as far in debt as we can go. Because this is a positive being added to a positive, and you'd expect a positive result, but it's negative. So for sign numbers, if you add two positives and don't get a positive, that means you have a signed overflow and V equals 1. We can also take a look at the other side of our line here, where we take a look at 8, 0 plus FF. It ends up being 7F plus a carry, which means that this calculation 80 plus FF does not work on the unsigned line. But pictorially, what it means here is I was as far dead as I could go. I went another dollar in debt, and now I have all the money in the universe. And the reason for that is because I had a negative, and I added a negative, and I didn't get a negative, I got a positive. So if you add two positives together and get a negative, or add two negatives to get a positive, in both cases v is equal to 1 which means you have a signed overflow because the result is not valid. A signed overflow where v equals 1 occurs if you add two numbers of the same sign and the result is a result of opposite sign. Now we're not always going to get an addition. Sometimes we're going to get a subtraction. Let's take a look at a number like 5 subtract 3. We can rewrite that as a 5 subtract positive 3 or 5 plus negative 3. These two are identical, they will give us the same result. But what we've done here is we've taken a subtraction and converted it by adding the opposite sign. We've converted it to an addition where we can apply either this rule or this rule. So for instance, if we have a positive and we're subtracting a negative, and let's just say our answer is negative, this is the same thing as a positive plus the opposite of the negative, a positive, giving us a negative, where in this case v is equal to 1. So for any kind of subtraction, we have to convert it to the equivalent addition to understand whether v equals 1 or v equals 0. Now if we have a positive and we subtract a positive, that's the same thing as a positive plus a negative. Now up here, a positive means we're going in this direction, a negative means we go in the opposite direction, and if you add numbers of the opposite sign, there's no way you can get a signed overflow, so in that case, v is equal to zero. Now let's take what we've learned here about our signed overflow and apply it to question three and four on lab one. Now we're going to start with number 4a, because it's a lot easier to see in binary. I think the answer here is 71 plus a borrow. So that means our n, if you recall, is 0. So this is correct. Our c here is 1. That is correct. Our z is 0 because it's not 0. So what we want to come up with next is what about our v bit? So in this case, this 0 here means that this number here is positive, and we're subtracting a 1, so that's subtracting a negative. So that's the same thing as a positive plus a positive, and we got a positive. So v is indeed 0. So positive subtract a negative, same thing as a positive plus a positive, but our result here is positive, so this makes sense. Adding two positive, getting a positive, v is definitely 0. Let's take a look at the next one, the addition. This is a negative here plus a negative, giving us a negative. So again, v is 0, because if you add two negatives and get a negative, you expect a negative. Let's go and take a look at question number 3. Now when we take a look at question 3, one of the things you got to remember is what numbers in hex have the most significant bit, or the n bit, 1 or 0. And 0 to 7 as the first digit, n is 0. 
8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F is n equals 1. So using that rule, we find that this is a negative. A, E is negative because it's 1, 0, 1, 0 for A. C is negative because it's 1, 1, 0, 0. So that's adding a negative plus a negative. And 7B, if you remember, 0, 1, 1, 1 is 7. So we're adding two negatives and getting a positive, And therefore, V indeed should be 1. I believe this one was 6C plus a carry here. So the 7B was wrong, but this is a positive. 6 starts with a 0, F starts with a 1. So this is subtracting a negative, which is the same thing as a positive plus a positive. And we did get a positive, and therefore, oops, I think we should circle this guy. When you look at a number like this, the least significant bit is the 1's place, and that's 2 to the 0. The next bit over is the 2's place, which is 2 to the 1 power. And so 1, 2, 4 is 2 to the 2, and so forth. And so the powers of 2 become the bit numbers all the way up to 2 to the 7 here. So this LSB is bit 0. This is bit 7. And so when it says circle bit number 6, it's this guy here. Okay, let's look at question 9. And it's asking us to convert without a calculator. And we're no longer going to do that. Believe me, we're going to allow calculators. And we have two numbers here, 60,000 as a short and minus 25,000 as a short. And we want to see how we would go about dealing with these numbers. So let's bring up our grid for our unsigned and signed short and get an idea of how we would actually do these calculations. Now what we have here 16-bit unsigned numbers and here we have 16-bit signed numbers. And as we know 16-bit means short. Now the numbers we were looking at here were 60,000 decimals. So 60,000. And uh, so what we want to do is bring up our calculator to figure this out and we'll come up with a number here. Now also we have minus 25,000 which is again we're going to have to do a calculation here to figure out what is our number here. Now one of the questions that are asked is 60,000, is it signed or unsigned? Well, 60,000, as you can see here, is not going to show up in the signed line because the largest positive signed number is 32767, and 60,000 or any number in this range is not going to be available in the 16-bit signed numbers. The 60,000 only exists as an unsigned number. Now, any number such as if I said 20,000 here, that's 20,000 there. And I said, well, what would happen if I said is 20,000 signed or unsigned? And you would say it can be either. But minus 25,000 or any negative number only exists in the signed. It doesn't exist in the unsigned numbers. So let's take a look at how we would do calculations to come up with what is 60,000 and what is minus 25,000. If we want to work out what 60,000 is in hex, what we're going to have to do is make sure we're in decimal put in 60,000 and we just hit the hex button and the number here should be 0xEA60. And so by using a calculator it's very easy to just hit the hex button and away you go. Now if we want to figure out what minus 25,000 is, we're going to have to switch over to decimal, clear this, and put in 65,536 and then subtract the 25,000, say equals, and then convert. And so this number here is 0x9e58, because if you recall, this is offset by 65,536, or 2 to the 16, from this 80 to FFFF. That's why we did 65,536 and added this, which is subtracting 25,000, figuring out what it was, and bringing it up on this side here, and seeing that it is actually 9e58, which is somewhere in here. 